In today's episode, we're gonna be talking about inflation and how it affects you and what you can do to beat it. Inflation affects almost every aspect of your life when it comes to your finances, including gas, groceries, and even the price of a hamburger. Not only does it affect these everyday aspects of your life, but it also affects your investments. And you might be wondering why there's been so many fluctuations in the stock market recently. It's due to inflation. We're gonna be talking about the correlation of inflation and also how it affects your investments and also interest rates. We'll also be talking about the action items that you can take to beat inflation. If this is your first time here to the channel, first of all, welcome. This is the Legacy Investing Show where we're gonna be talking about all things related to real estate, investing, personal finance, and entrepreneurship. Our mission for this channel is to help you achieve financial freedom sooner rather than later. So if this is of interest, make sure that you like this video, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos that come out. And make sure you stay till the end where we're gonna be explaining not only how to beat inflation, but also why we encourage it. The first aspect that we're gonna be talking about is what's causing inflation. It's no surprise this past year due to the pandemic, the government has been pumping a lot of stimulus into the economy. The Federal Reserve has printed more than $3.4 trillion over the past year. Trump also passed the CARES Act last year, which was another $2.2 trillion. And of course, most recently, Biden passed the $1.9 trillion stimulus bill. Now you might be thinking, this is good for the economy. People are getting money to pay for their bills, their grocery bills, etc. While true, there's always a trade-off with this much money being printed. It's just economics 101. When there's more demand than supply, that's going to put upward pressure on prices. Usually the average inflation rate that the Fed wants to keep is around 2-3%. to However, they announced a couple of months ago that they're okay with inflation being a little bit higher than that. The second aspect that we're going to talk about is how inflation affects the stock market. Simply put, the stock market doesn't like when there's a lot of inflation. In fact, there's an inverse relationship between the two. When inflation becomes a problem and it gets above 2-3%, to Central banks can pull different levers to tame it. What they typically do is they raise interest rates to do it. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna discourage people from spending. Think about it this way. Would you rather buy a house with a 3% interest rate or a 5% interest rate? Like I said before, there's an inverse relationship between stocks and interest rates. More people are willing to park their money in treasury bonds or savings accounts with a higher interest rate environment. The reasoning for this is deemed as less risky to put your money in those accounts versus putting in the stock market. We actually like to park our money in a savings account alternative called Outlet. The second way to start earning passive income streams is through a company called Outlet. It's one of the easiest ways to get started and you can make as high as a 9% return. In fact, this is where we park some of our money in between real estate deals. As you may know already, savings accounts yields can be awful. On average, we're looking at 0.1% or even lower. With Outlet promising a 9% yield, we started to dig a little bit deeper into this company to see if this was legit. First of all, you can download this app for free in your Apple Store or Google Play Store. First of all, we love the UI. It's really simple to use and you can connect with most banks in America. You can also set up wire transfers, which connects with all banks across America. Now, one thing of note, it's not your traditional savings account and it's not backed by the FDIC. It generates returns by utilizing money market accounts that have been heavily vetted by different institutions. The money that you deposit gets exchanged into digital dollars. They then lend out those digital dollars to other people to pay you the interest. This is similar to what banks do, except for they keep most of that profit. With Outlet, however, they're giving you majority of the returns. The great thing is your money is protected through their own insurance plan through Fireblocks. So if something ever happened to your money, like through a hacker, your money is protected through Fireblocks insurance. This is something that I've asked about and something that I've dug into heavily. On their site it states, funds are stored by Fireblocks, which also protects against outlet going out of business, shutting down, or disappearing with your funds. It's essentially like having an FDIC protection plan on your account. After you deposit the money, you can start to see those returns in real time. You can see it fluctuating sometimes as low as 3%, but I've seen it go as high as 20%. The current average is roughly around 9%, which is awesome. You can also access the money at any time, and it's not like a stock where you have to sell in order to have access to the capital. So what are the fees and costs associated with Outlet? There are zero fees associated with this, so you don't have to pay a monthly fee, and there's no fees to withdraw your money at all. It's really as simple as that. It beats a savings account all day, and it also even beats some index funds. 
If you're interested, there's a link in the description below that gives you a nice sign up bonus when you use that link. And the third thing that we're gonna talk about is how we can beat inflation. Now, the nice thing about inflation is that you can typically buy stocks at a cheaper price. There's actually a lot of people I know that waits for inflation to be high so that they can go shopping for more stocks at a cheaper discount. Now, this is a good tactic to use if you believe in the stock market long term, but I have a better alternative. One thing that I do want to caution you on is don't hold large amounts of cash long term. Let's say you have $100,000 in cash just sitting under a mattress for the next 20 years. Do you know how much that's going to be worth? A measly $55,367. What that means is that in 20 years, the purchasing power is going to be less than half of what it is today. So what should you do instead? What we do and what we recommend is to invest in a lot of good debt. So what exactly is good debt? I'll define good debt as long-term fixed rate loans on cash flow producing properties. The reason I don't mind inflation, and in fact I encourage it, is because of the long-term fixed rate loans that we have on our cash flow producing properties. We call it the inflation triple crown. Let me explain. Let's talk about the first thing, price inflation. Let's say you have a portfolio that's worth $1 million. And just to stick with round numbers, let's say you have a 10% inflation over the next few years. Your portfolio is now worth $1.1 million, but you also have a loan on this property of $800,000 and your equity position is $200,000. So with 10% inflation, your equity position now goes up by $100,000 from $200,000 to $300,000. So that's a return of 50% just from inflation. The second thing we're gonna talk about is how debt is easier to pay off with tomorrow's dollars. So you have that $800,000 in debt. Not only are your tenants paying down your debt, but inflation is working in your favor. With a 10% inflation rate, your $800,000 in debt is now only $720,000 in inflation adjusted dollars. Now you might be thinking, doesn't the bank adjust for inflation? The answer is no. The best part is the bank only asks to be paid back in nominal dollars and not inflation adjusted dollars. So with that, that's another 10% return. The third thing that we're gonna talk about is how it increases your cash flow. So let's say you're getting $10,000 a month in rent across your properties. Your mortgage, taxes and insurance, and other repairs are gonna be $8,000 per month. So that's $2,000 in cash flow in this example. And to stick with our 10% inflation example, your rents are now $11,000. However, because your mortgage is on a 30 year fixed rate loan, this expense will generally be unchanged. Of course, taxes, insurance and repairs are subject to inflation. So to be conservative, let's say instead of $3,000 in cash flow, you're now at about $2,600 in cash flow. Your $2,000 in cash flow now becomes more like $2,600 just from inflation alone. That's another 30% return. And this is just one of five ways that real estate pays you. We did a video on the five ways that real estate pays you that you can watch in the description below after this video. This is why we love real estate. As long as you buy cash flow producing properties with good debt, you're always gonna be coming out ahead. We created this channel to help you achieve financial freedom sooner rather than later. If you like this video, make sure that you give it a like. It really helps us out. Make sure that you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so that you're not missing any of the videos that we put out. Thanks and we'll see you next time.